So they're taking their time to say, you know what, I want to move well. So it was seeing more of those people. So not necessarily bodybuilders, uh, powerlifters, because it's the person dependent. So regardless of what sport they did, it was they're seeing me because they actually want to get better. I'm not just giving somebody a home exercise program and then saying, well, this was a waste of time because they're not going to look at this ever again. It's people that I said, you know what? This is what you need to do to warm up before you squat. This is what you need to do to warm up before you do anything with your shoulders. Okay. Podcasting from somewhere with protein shakes and no yearly membership fees. This is the Hero Fit Podcast, the show that talks about the ins and outs of fitness, nutrition, and anything else that might get you feeling like a hero. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your hosts, Nick Stutzman and Dan Weber. Hey, for all you listeners out there, welcome to the Hero Fit Podcast. I am Nick Stutzman, alongside my co-host, Dan Weber. Every show, we try to tackle something fitness-related, whether that be workout regimens, nutritional topics, or anything that you might find interesting. Today's episode, we're going to talk with Kelsey Fink about crossfitting and other fitness-related aspects of your career. We appreciate you taking the time to join us today. We have an amazing interview, and I know that everyone out there will love. So let's get right into it. Kelsey, tell us about Kelsey. Again, thanks, guys, for uh, inviting me to this. So I... Grew up here in Rochester, um, went to NAS for physical therapy school, uh, played sports all through my life between like gymnastics, softball, volleyball, field hockey, soccer, you name it. I probably tried it. Ended up, I have the cliche story that I ended up tearing my ACL my senior year of high school. Oh no, I don't want to be an interior designer anymore. I guess I want to be a physical therapist. So (laughs) it's the cliche story. So then went to PT school, played field hockey all through college, ended up going through four more surgeries in that time just for knees and hips and stuff. Once I got out of college, I really missed that team aspect and that's where I found CrossFit. I really love the community aspect of it because I was in the weight room all the time for rehab I kind of just felt like I was at home I felt like I had I had a team I could work on my own but I had that team with me so when we moved to my husband and I moved to Baltimore found a CrossFit gym there again loved it and being there for a year or two is kind of when I decided oh I just I think I can do this as a coach too I think that would be a lot of fun working as a physical therapist in an outpatient clinic I was really limited to the patients I would see and so I really love to watch athletes move and that's where I kind of developed into opening muscle up physical therapy my own office once we moved to West Virginia that's where I kind of met with CrossFit Intense opened up my own thing love working with athletes and um CrossFit has also introduced me to powerlifting and bodybuilding, which has been a whole new, whole new world. <laughs> Fun to just experiment in sports. So that's the yeah, synopsis. A <laughs> yeah, a lot going on. So, so. back it up to, to the ACL injury, the, the first one. And this whole cliche thing. Yeah. <laughs> so is that where all physical therapists start their career with an injury? And then they... <laughs> if, yeah, if you literally, if you ask about 50% of PTs will say, I tore my ACL or they had some sort of injury because that's how anybody's introduced to the physical therapy world unless mm-hmm. they're families in it for some reason. Everybody has an injury. They're in the rehab world. They see it. It was it was cool. I thought back on it one time in middle school. Whenever anybody got hurt, like in a game or something, I always wanted to help, but I'm in middle school. I don't know how to help them, you know? So it was cool just to have that cliche story, be in the rehab world and say, oh, this is kind of what I want to do. Don't want to do surgery. Don't want to deal with blood. Don't want to deal with pills, but Mm -hmm. just being able to help people, teach them how to move better. Yeah. So ask, seriously, ask any PT about half the time they're going to tear their ACL. (laughs) <laughs> so what were you doing when you tore your ACL? Soccer. Yep. I was that girl that I thought I was invincible. And I was like, oh, my gosh, look at those girls. They tore their ACLs because they, they're not strong. And then karma hit me real hard. <laughs> and so, uh, yep, soccer did it. Soccer did it the second time as well. I was actually doing a pickup game and wasn't supposed to be. So field hockey coach wasn't too thrilled with that one. But <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> What, how so, old were you when you had both injuries? Uh, first one was junior, uh, end of my junior year of high school. So I missed my senior year playing. The next one was my sophomore year of college. And then I ended up getting hip surgeries as well. My senior year of college and then my second year of grad school. So it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> how did how did the hip ones come into play? They were just like, well, while we're, while we're here, we all, might as well just yeah. do your hips as well? Well, or? what ended up happening was I um, – I, was playing field hockey. I was doing the butterfly stretch and my hip popped. I'm like, well, this is weird. Now it hurts. Talked to the hip surgeon who ended up diagnosing me with hip dysplasia on both sides. And he said, oh, well, this is probably why you tore your ACLs because now you have torn labrums from your hip dysplasia, just instability. 
and that probably caused the ACL tears. I just wasn't symptomatic in the hips so until a lot later. Of it was genetic, essentially. Yep. Thanks, mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't we love genetics? <laughs> What's uh, the most challenging part of of being injured? Well, I <laughs> especially at such a young age. Yeah, the first one I felt so bad for my mom. I was just a monster after. A few days of just not being able, because I was always moving. I always, I, at one point I was doing four different sports at once. Mm -hmm. So just being able, having to sit and not do anything, I hated everybody. I was yeah. so upset. I was such, such a monster. And then it got a little bit easier because as I went through, you know, I understood, okay, I got to find something to do cardio wise. It's like just arms, whether it's just the arm ergometer, do something. Pain was pretty bad because I can't take pain pills. They make me super nauseous, so I can't take those. The other thing that got me is looking at the difference between my legs and how like one was big and one was skinny. That was mentally, right? Just the body image thing. It really threw me off. So Yeah, I'm sure that can be frustrating, Ugh. especially as an athlete when you see something like that because it almost gives you that stigma of with the injury and, and then being like, well, this set me back. Now what am I going to do? So a lot of that can definitely be a struggle. When you're younger too, you know, six to eight months of rehab is like an eternity, right? I mean, and then you're looking at colleges. Well, I can't look at division one schools anymore. Nobody wants me, you know? So that was kind of, that was a little hard hit, but. Do you wish you had gotten the or had known about the hip dysplasia prior to college? Yes, yes. I Actually, since then, I've done a lot of research with especially the relationship between hips and knees as a physical therapist and really pushed to work with girls that are in like that middle school, high school age and really teaching. I had a lot of clients in West Virginia that I try to teach, this is what you need to do <laughs> so you don't hurt yourself in the future, just how to balance it all out so and do you think that that would have been what could have prevented the acl injuries having so. known about the hip dysplasia it wasn't necessarily something that you were doing out of the ordinary like a, a cut or a, you know a juke it was more or less just kind of something from the body deteriorating in a yeah. sense yeah the fir well the first one was uh contact i got sandwiched and twisted so that was this textbook the second one though was definitely it was non-contact so i definitely think that that could have been avoided by knowing what to do and just having What's nice now is there's a lot more emphasis on strength training in high school, even in season, where sometimes it's tricky, though. It's always used to be like sport, 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 just do yeah. your sport. And now it's actually like, oh, we need to strength train outside of our sport right in the off season to actually make sure we don't get hurt during the sport. So yeah, when I was I coached track briefly and I kind of introduced the concept of lifting weights because when I was in school, we didn't really do any of that. Runners just, never we were did, just right? Running. Yeah. yeah. And then for football, we lifted in the off season, but not in season. And other sports, like no other sports really did much lifting. So, yeah, I mean, I things wrestled. are getting smarter. I wrestled, yeah. so it was tough to l want to lift weights, especially when you're trying to lose weight. Mm, uh, yeah. And my, the years that I went to, when I was wrestling, the, the emphasis on making weight was a lot more prevalent and losing the weight was a lot tougher. Now it's a little bit more, not as, it's frowned upon because obviously it's starving yourself is not something that they want you to do. But also working out, it's tough. Like you're starving yourself all week and trying to lift weights at the same time after you've done, you know, two hours of practice and drills and running. It's like, I don't want to go to the gym. I don't even want to look at a gym. <laughs> but yeah, I can definitely see where I think now that's more, there should be more of an emphasis, especially to, to maintain the endurance and stamina and just your overall composition of being able to grow your body a little bit. I was probably hurting my body more by starving it than I was growing and help and helping at the time. So I can definitely see now where I, that's definitely a lot more important. Yeah. Well, that sports are tough when they have weight classes too. Yeah, for sure. Sounds like you were doing a lot of different things though, which should have, should have been a, a positive. One thing I've heard is that there's a lot of injuries in young people these days because they're hyper specific, like focusing on one mm -hmm. sport all year long yeah. um, and not really cross training. Yeah. So that's, I think that's where I ended up. I mean, yeah, I had all the other stuff go on, but I think that's where I ended up being. I think I was a good athlete just because I was able to just develop myself in different ways. It wasn't yeah. just field hockey. I know it's funny. I used, I coached field hockey when I was in Maryland and it was just the girls were, you could tell who just did field hockey and some of them did lacrosse too. So that kind of helped, but it'd be really cool if they did something else on top of it. Just one other sport. So who was it? Was it Abby Wambach that did uh she did a whole article to an interview that had, she did three different sports and she tried to push, you know, girls need to do oh, guys too, but be diverse. Yeah, yeah. You just need to be diverse in order to get all these great skills to be a good athlete. Urban Meyer 
would say that he only recruited football players that played other sports for the for the same reason. So I'm guessing that if you consider yourself a good athlete, so that might have been the the base of helping you get to where you are today as a kind of successful CrossFit athlete, figure competitor, powerlifter, all these. Yeah. yeah, and let's let's break that down. So you were in college; you were just kind of more of a college athlete, but you were going to school for physical therapy yep. after the first ACL tear. Yep. Correct. So you went from high school to college with physical therapy. Now, did you feel like doing other types of like workouts? Like that's when you kind of uh, saw CrossFit as, as something that was more endearing or something like that? Or is that still later on after the other, you know, after college? Honestly, I found a Groupon <laughs> for a CrossFit gym locally. And my, one of my classmates and I were the crazier ones that went, wanted to go try it together and so I was like okay I don't really know much about it so just tried it and what I love about it is just it's a mix of everything and I'm so ADD I hate going to the gym and doing the same exact thing I need some sort of change so that was nice you could go in and especially back when I did it they didn't always post what the workout was going to be so you just found out when you got there you know so that was kind of fun too to me anyway so how, how long ago was that 2013 2013 that's when i started yeah so about six almost six years ago oh geez yep <laughs> we're, we're aging ourselves I know. oh my <laughs> <clears throat> and so uh what were some of the things that like i mean because I, 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 I would think crossfit was in its infancy back then right uh it had been going on um it was starting to get a lot bigger i think now it's very saturated um you can find a crossfit gym anywhere and now they're starting to actually close down because now the better ones are starting to stay open um then it was starting to grow a little bit more and what what made you other than just kind of the exercise and stuff like that like what were some of the exercises that you, that you thought were different and more unique to crossfit than to maybe some of the you know power building or power, power lifting <laughs> and bodybuilding yeah well what it's i like obsessed with power building yeah really. i want to make that a thing yeah. and i heard it's already Once, a thing i want to do invent it, it and yeah. Yeah. realized it's already been invented yeah, I'm not there's power about. fitters too yeah. yeah there's power what now power, power fitters, fitters? Yeah. Oh, yeah see oh, <laughs> power fitter I power lifter and a crossfitter oh ah see yeah, yeah. So <laughs> power lifting and bodybuilding so you start cro- <laughs> I can speak his words. So you started with CrossFit. Yeah. What were some of the exercises that were more unique to CrossFit? Um, what I really liked was getting reintroduced to gymnastics. Since I grew up with gymnastics, um, I actually quit that because of hip pain. So that was like foreshadowing. But uh, but I got back into the gymnastics part of it. So yeah, you can do pull-ups. But then I learned how to do kipping pull-ups. We got into handstands a little bit more. Um, it was, oh, I can do push-ups. Let's just get better at these. Um, and I love to combine them with the weightlifting. So learning the Olympic lifts was was really intriguing to me. I love doing cleans. Um, snatches terrify me. I don't know if you can you guys see that scar. Yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I kind of head butted a bar that, uh, a couple that, of years ago. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, so, but I do love the mix of the, especially the gymnastics and the weightlifting together. Cardio stuff's all right, I guess, but... <laughs> I was admiring the rings when I came into this, uh, to the CrossFit gym here where we're recording this because I, I love working on rings. Gymnastics exercises are something that interests me as well, but I, I go to a conventional gym, so I don't really get to work with them very much. Yeah. And Olympic lifts are also have been appealing to me. I haven't done much of that since I was an athlete. Yeah, they're fun just because I call them the plyometric weightlifting, whereas the powerlifting is just like kind of the slower <laughs> version, mm-hmm. so... Yeah, it's just fun to change it up. So would you say that your college sports career kind of fizzled out after all the surgeries? Oh, yeah. Once um, once I had that hip pain and I, that was my senior year, I'm like, yeah, I'm done. I'm done with field hockey. You know, I, I wanted to coach, but I didn't want to play anymore. It just, if I was going to keep hurting myself, you know, it wasn't worth it. Is there anything so. after college for field hockey, really? There's some pickup, especially around here. There's some pickup like indoor leagues, like adult leagues and stuff, but there's I was a goalie, so like, if I want to invest in my own equipment, I can play, but it's really expensive and not uh, worth it for an adult league. I mean, there is so. an Olympic team or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. that's, I mean, that's what I mean, like, as far as, like, professional, that's about as far as it goes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you got the team aspect back in CrossFit. Yeah. And what about the competition? Is that, is that, is that not as important to you or? For cross, well, CrossFit competitions terrify me. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. I don't. I can do powerlifting, and now you know the figure was fun. But if I'm in an individual CrossFit competition, I'm like on the brink of breaking down because I just get in my head. Because there's so many different things that I have to be good at, and I'm not good at all of them. 
right? Right. There's mm-hmm. so many different things and so many different combinations. I love the team competitions, though, because then I, I will work my butt off for somebody else. I won't do mm-hmm. it for myself, but I'll do it for somebody else. And then usually a lot of the team ones are for charity anyway. So you just go have fun. It's funny you brought that up. Uh- a podcast about athletes and how they had the certain those those upper echelon athletes have that like confidence in their brain where when they go out and they they play or they go out and just do a sport say a pitcher they're just going to go out there and just going to do their thing and, and there's some that are in their heads and once they cross that practice line or cross into the into the arena or whatever it is they sometimes will fall apart and that's the difference between the good athletes and the great athletes is that the great athletes, you know, can go out into a competition or whatever sometimes and, and, and be able to succeed no matter what, or else, even if they have a bad game, they'll come back and be able to do it again. It was a, it's a very interesting podcast. I, I highly recommend it, especially for that one particularly, but it goes along with what you're talking about with competitions, just being able to kind of get it out of your own head. Yeah, it's tough. I had, I always had trouble with that all through school too. I actually, I still listen to it. I got, um, a sp- enhancing sports performance hypnosis that I listen to every once in a while and it's just visualization is what it is it's visualizing your body the times that I actually stay awake for it this is what I found it's (laughs) visualizing your body um and then visualizing like somebody watching you play so like you're watching yourself play and then becoming yourself and playing so that really helped me a lot my senior year field hockey in college because I I would break down as a goalie I'd be like okay we lost the game it's all my fault Meanwhile, I'd made 30 saves in the game, but so it's not, you know, and it's never anybody's one fault, but, uh, but Goalie's that a really unique helps. position for that. Hmm. Like the mental <laughs> yeah. aspect of it athletics. I, Goalies, pitchers, R- yeah. Ryan, we, kickers. We're, mm-hmm. we're in Sabres country and Ryan Miller was one of the best goalies who played for Team oh, USA, but <laughs> could not he, handle had, the pressure. he had a sports psychologist because it's very mentally taxing being a goalie in think, that position. I think Sidney Crosby definitely didn't help either. So. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with those, uh, what was it, the penalty shots. Those, he killed them every time. Oh, those oh, those are awful. Just one-on-ones. The Winter Classic, yeah. especially. I remember it was the Winter Classic yeah. and Crosby came in and just, yeah. bye, Ryan. I remember that. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's tough. <laughs> bye, Ryan. It can only be, it can only so, be one winner. So you started out crossfitting. I guess that's. I know. Sorry, that's, we're going all the, over the place. That's the verb. No, it's fine. That's great. I just know how to reel it back in. We started out crossfitting, um, but did you take it seriously then at that time? No, uh, for the first year, I had no idea what the heck was going on. Just kind of I doing was, it to do it. Yeah, I was still learning all the terms. I was still learning because, like, we've got different terms for different workouts. We've got the different movements I was Fran, getting used to. Yeah. Yep. A lot of female names I've noticed, or at least. Could be you can screw it as female names. What was it Fran and then uh, there was something. Oh, else. there's a lot. Were there's these a lot. Exercises or workouts? no? They're workouts. Well, so oh, okay. the workouts. I'm sorry. CrossFit yeah. has no a, wad. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the yeah. Murph. <laughs> yep. Yeah. CrossFit yeah. has. They have benchmark workouts that are all named after women, and mm. then um, they have hero workouts too that are usually dedicated to somebody that um, that did their time overseas or in the service or something that um, may have passed during their time there too. So yeah, Murph is. A good one. That's that's like <laughs> that's the, the that's like yeah the one I think the one at least the one I've 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 ever seen for the co- CrossFit ones that I watched on ESPN mm-hmm. and that was the one that were like it's time for the Murph this is where you know separates the men from the from the boys <laughs> or you know how they all cliche with it but yep. yeah and I I mean I saw women that were just you know they were just so taxing on their bodies men and women it's it's unreal but I guess that is like kind of the benchmark exercise in a sense. It's one of them. I mean, it's a hero wad. It's just a it's a traditional one to do on Memorial Day. Um, but yeah, they have all the benchmark workouts that have all different movements. So what you're supposed to do is test some out and then maybe like four or six months down the road after you've been training, retest it, see if your time gets better. Mm-hmm. The great thing about CrossFit is that there's so many things that you can get better at, but you just have to pick a couple at a time, right? You're so right. You can't do it all at once. Yeah. But like it, when I... You can work out forever then because there's always a new goal to chase. Exactly. Yeah. So like when I put on five pounds, I can't do pull ups like I can, but they suck when I, but I can lift a lot heavier when but I those, lose five pounds. Are those pull ups I got. I, I, have I love a, the butterfly. Pull-ups. I, have a, I have a problem with that. I don't... <laughs> it's OK. So I understand why it's for to... speed or whatever, but. When you're in the we got a PT in the room, so <laughs> we're gonna about to learn. Yeah, yeah, when you're doing the workout for time, you gotta do whatever you gotta do, right? But you still have to practice. Like I still do strict pull ups. Like you have to still get the strength in there. I always tell people when I'm coaching them too, 
don't do the kipping if you can't do the strict. So, because that's where you hurt yourself. Yeah. So. Makes sense. <laughs> and it's important that there are good coaches like you. Because yeah. I CrossFit had a reputation, at least early on, for people getting injured, probably because, I'm guessing, people who are just jumping in for the money and weren't necessarily well, uh, yeah. the most intelligent coaches. I think, too, yeah. it was marketed or maybe maybe just from what I saw personally, but a lot of people were just, oh, you can just come in and, and you don't have to be an athlete or you don't have to have like uh you know you're not you don't have to be in the best shape to be able to do crossfit and i i've always felt like that that's just kind of bogus that is true but you have to have a coach that will scale back if you just have a coach that's just showing the workout and not working with that one person right so that's what my job is you can't jump in and yeah you just can't jump into the advanced people yeah that's what i'm saying kill yourself i know i couldn't just do i i could barely do three pull-ups let alone doing them fast like that so like when i see or hear people say oh anybody can do crossfit i'm like anybody i don't know I, I... have you seen so probably not they um they just started doing new videos for especially the older population like over 65 and like different like a suitcase deadlift like literally picking up suitcases or just different functional movements in that sense they're actually taking it now and they're trying to make it come back to the general population us normies not like the matt <laughs> frazier's and the rich fronings right they're trying to right. get it back to yeah just the general population and what we can do so fair enough i like i said i i i I think that there are obviously athletes out there who should be the crossfitters you know who are you're the best of the best and all that stuff and so i mean i completely understand that but i just think that it's the way it was being marketed or at least like i said Mm -hmm. maybe it was just personal experience from people that i saw how they were marketing i was like oh yeah you can just come in and you'll do fine and i'm like i don't know yeah I don't, feel, I don't feel like that that should be a thing or that should be your selling point anyways. I feel like it's something that I should be able to work towards perhaps yeah. at the most. You know? but a lot of gyms started doing like um like on ramps they would call them or just like um like a, I don't know what you want to call it, like fundamentals class where you have to like take a few classes first, learn what you got to do and then kind of go into it. That way you know yeah. like, okay, pull-ups is on the board but I'm going to do ring rows or I'm going to do barbell rows or something. You right. know how to scale it, so. That's that's been nice. I think that started to pick up the last few years. So we've established that you enjoyed CrossFit. That mm-hmm. it also sounds like it'd be something that potentially former athletes would be interested in, especially if they missed the camaraderie. But what took you away from CrossFit for a little while? What did you do after that? Powerlifting. Powerlifting. Yep. So, yes. Yes, I, uh, how did you get to that? Yeah, the gym in West Virginia, CrossFit Intense. Um, they brought me in as their physical therapist. I was one of their CrossFit coaches, and I appreciated the powerlifting side the owners were also they're also regional chairs for the uspa so they always had the powerlifting affiliated gym so they had all the good equipment all the competition equipment i watched a couple of the competitions they had on site and i'm like oh my god and i was still at the point where i'm like this is so stupid why would you max out like i was i had that stigma of why would you max out you're just gonna hurt yourself i kind of have that stigma it's scary (laughs) it's scary and then i watched a couple and i'm like Maybe I like to I test could my try. limits, so I, I don't think it's as bad as he does. He, yeah. <laughs> he's worried about getting hurt. I Well, I'm, I'm not a power lifter, so I don't really care what my one rep max is. That's sort of right. my philosophy, yeah, for, for better or worse. <laughs> right. So, well, I was working with um, the owner there who is a bench press maniac, and he actually taught me how to do it. And then my one rep ended up being – I always could never bench more than like 100-some pounds, and I ended up getting close to 140, and he's like – See, you just needed to learn how to do it. And I was like, huh, <laughs> you know, like what happens if I learn how to do all the other ones? Then it turned into, huh, now that I know how to train this, now I can treat my powerlifters better. So I actually started seeing more of the powerlifters come into PT. And then that's how, and then I just loved it because I can actually objectify how strong I am, <laughs> right? I can be that bro, you know, this is my bench max, you know, but <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just liked it because it was something different. It was a different training style. And I, like I said, it was very empowering for me. You went, it went from, in my mind, like <laughs> almost like chaos to very structured. Yes, from CrossFit it definitely to did. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and then bodybuilding even more so because <laughs> that was structure, even further structure. So how long yeah. did you do powerlifting for? I trained. Well, I did that for um, like a nine month to twelve month cycle, about a year. So I did about three meets in that time. I did my first one just to see what happened. My second one was awful because I didn't actually train like I should have. I didn't give myself that time I needed. And my third one I actually did really well. And then I switched over to bodybuilding. So you, so you did some 
meets and CrossFit prior, right? Yeah, uh, competitions, was, yeah. It was, it was just kind of like, but that was, in the beginning, that was kind of just messing around stuff. Yeah. And so you did some in powerlifting. And what do you think were the, was the difference between maybe possible success and, and both of those? Well, the CrossFit made me really anxious because I never knew what was going to happen. You know, you don't, you don't know the events till you get there. And I don't know if I'm going to be good at it. Powerlifting. I practice like I, or yeah, practice like you're going to play, right? So I was always doing the same routine for all my lifts, no matter what the weight was, so that by the time I got to the platform, I just did my routine. So I think that's where I was a little more successful in that. Again, my second one, my training just, I got lazy on my training, so that didn't work out well. But my third one, I just kept my structure, kept my accessory work in there for the extra strengthening, and that really helped too. So Yeah, Dan says that there's something about certain athletes and the, their structure. That they need the structure to, uh, I think, with especially with powerlifting. I, I have this, yeah, I'm, I'm always trying to, like, psychoanalyze people. And I have this <laughs> idea that uh, people that are, that end up becoming personal trainers are people that love structure in their lives. They're, they're the J's on the Myers-Briggs system. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, well, what do you say, type Be, A? You know, yeah, type, yeah, type A people want to have things measured and yeah, you know, nothing wrong with that. Do you feel like that? If you're someone that's a little bit less less that way then perhaps crossfit would once again appeal to you because yeah. you know it's kind of unique or you don't know what you're going into necessarily yeah. but that can keep, that can be really fun for some people and it can be really anxiety provoking in some people it's really interesting to me that you did both yeah um <laughs> i'm a little i'm type a ish <laughs> like i'm not fully type a yeah, but i'm all over the place and seem to enjoy all of these and then as you stated then you went into so you you conquered powerlifting and you decided i need a little bit more <laughs> measurement structure in my life and went to bodybuilding well so what happened there <laughs> was i started seeing um he's now one of my close friends and he's actually my coach for my first show i started um working with him a little bit and i'm like and then i started seeing more bodybuilders um just treatment wise and i'm like huh this is and i had the same mentality of well i don't really know how they're training and i see them going through their cut and they <laughs> they look awful and they look so miserable i'm like well how am i supposed to gauge my treatment you know because i don't want and then i can't leave cupping marks i can't you know i have to be careful how much i do because we can't get too inflamed and whatever so then what i ended up doing after my last powerlifting meet i worked with him to do a fake prep and i got ready for my photo shoot so i did a cool photo shoot for myself i was all proud i was getting ready for vacation so it wasn't anything Cut the water weight yep yeah so <laughs> it, yeah we did that too that was awful water loading is goodness gracious <laughs> speaking of <laughs> there you go and so so you dove into this because you wanted to learn, wanted to... learn more about it yep. firsthand experience so you can help treat people that are doing it themselves and, and understand what they're going through yeah so okay. he took me through a fake prep for my photo shoot and vacation. I got back from vacation. I'm like, well, I made it this far. Let's just try it. I realized that it was a completely different level that he put me on to get to a show. But, um, and that was miserable. But I absolutely loved it. It was so cool. Just, I look so good. <laughs> the transformation? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. See, what was the see time some frame? pictures behind, behind Dan here. So, yeah. Yeah. So, what was it? Last April was my last powerlifting meet. So, from May until July, I did my fake prep for my vacation. And then August to October, I cut for the show. So, it was it turned into about nine, nine weeks or so, nine or ten weeks of what, a cut. What kind of exercises were you doing for the bodybuilding? The first time – well, the first – fake prep I did a fortitude training um and he had it was pretty much full body four days a week and it was like a day of more strength and then a pump day a day of strength and a pump day and it kind of mm -hmm. alternated but it stayed full body and then for um for the real prep we he gave me um we went through John Meadows one of his programs so it was more of a buys and tries day a shoulder back day that type mm -hmm. of deal and it was separated by body part and then cardio <laughs> a lot of cardio so yeah it was just nice to have that structured program for it do you think everything that led up to bodybuilding the stuff that you had learned helped you be a better body lift or you know bodybuilder or do you think that it was more or less uh just kind of the coaching and everything that you had yeah i just i did whatever he told me to do and then that's that's pretty much how i took bodybuilding he gave me my meals for the day he said, this is what you can have and you can interchange this food with this food, you know, just so you're not bored, but stick with this. You know, this is the training you have to do. If you do all this stuff, you will succeed. 
So was that the first time you ever counted your calories? I didn't really count macros. calories. I just did whatever he told oh, me so to do. Was... He counted my calories yeah, for yeah. me. And then mm-hmm. he just gave me meals, like examples of meals yep. and said, you know, just switch this out with that. So that was nice because I'm so bad. At, I'm just starting to now figure out macros and stuff and count them and see what happens with my body. So like now I'm me too. It's it's like a science. It Let is. me tell you. I, I, I props it's to very the nutritionist. Eye opening the first time you do it. I, I'm yeah. just using the My Fitness Pal and just recording what I'm eating and being more aware. And I'm like, man, I really don't eat that bad. And I was like, how come I can't lose weight? I'm like, and I work out, I play sports, but I feel bigger. I feel I'm probably in my be- the best shape of my life. Mm-hmm. It's gonna have to be a podcast episode. I know, <laughs> but I, I look at what I eat and I'm like, man, I'm not losing weight. And I, and I don't know if that just because of my anemia or what, or just, you know, attribute to that, but it's just frustrating. I drink a ton of water and I, and I'm not eating that bad now. How did you, how did you week. find your calories? I'm just, I'm just putting, just inputting it. So, sorry. So I'm going to yeah. sidetrack a little yep. bit. No, please do. <laughs> I do the metabolic testing as well. And I was showing you guys that machine and um, it does mm-hmm. the resting metabolic rate. Most people that I work with that use my fitness pal. My fitness pal will put them in their maintenance zone mm. so they don't lose weight because they're in their maintenance zone. Whereas when they test with their actual oxygen and their energy level breathing into a tube, mm. they're actually at a little, they need to be at more of a calorie deficit. Mm. Not everybody, I'm not but hitting like 80%. My calories. I'm not hitting my calories and it doesn't always count. Like I'm not putting in, putting like all the uh, workouts that I'm doing because I know I'm losing, you know, five, 700 mm. calories per workout. At least that's what my Fitbit says. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just find that stuff is, huh. it's a really fast, it's a lot of work. I want to pursue this, but it's complicated. It is. Yes. <laughs> And it's it's so everybody's different too. That's the thing. Yeah. So this you can a, you can, can listen to so many people. Yeah, this, the, we'll, we'll we'll get yeah. you on for that. All right. So you so you CrossFit. You did the powerlifting, and then you went to bodybuilding. Which obviously you you found one that you liked the most. Mm, you would think so. Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> no. Remember how I'm Type A ish? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that's why right now I'm actually training for my next powerlifting meet. So I'm at Ooh. yeah. So oh, I'm we're kinda, in a CrossFit Ooh. gym, and we're <laughs> going to be doing powerlifting again. Yeah, well, what's nice is I can still, I still use CrossFit. I have a CrossFit competition actually coming up first at my gym that I just came from. So I just mm-hmm. wanted to go back to support them. I love, I just go back. CrossFit's always my go to because I can stay fit with it. Again, it's a little bit of everything. And if yep. I'm bored of what I'm doing, I'll just go do a CrossFit workout really quick, right? <laughs> but powerlifting right now, I've got four days a week that I'm lifting and doing accessory work training for March. Um, and then I'll do another show, hopefully September, October. So it's just cool now because. I can play with it. You know what I mean? I have the ability. My body is letting me do it. Some days feel better than others, but like, why not? Right? Why not just play? (laughs) So how does your physical therapy knowledge play into all this? Well, I'm my own worst patient. So most of the time, if I do my (laughs) rehab and my exercises, I feel great. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, It's actually helped me figure out my best warm ups. And I've started doing more sensory training for myself. So then I've kind of seen a lot less pain with that a lot more successful lifts with it as well and then i'll i can't treat myself very well i can't grasp in or cup myself or like move my own joints very well so right. i'll usually go find somebody else to help me out like i see a chiropractor and a massage therapist pretty regularly so. i wouldn't feel too bad about that because i <laughs> i mean i used to be a personal trainer and the hardest person to train is myself so yep. <laughs> I, yep. I feel what you're saying. that's why that's why i still go back to coaches too for everything i'm like just you tell me what to do and i'll listen to you i won't listen to me you know yeah so that's the it's tough weird part how the, how the mind works yeah like that. <laughs> so what what kind of do you feel like that i mean this has kind of all happened within you know in the span of a couple of years and you had moved when did you move down to west virginia we moved down in 2016 and that's when i officially opened up my business down there too and what were you most interested in, in at that point? That was when I was all CrossFit. All CrossFit, <laughs> yeah. So. And a lot of your patients, I don't know if you call them patients. Yep. But yeah, patients. CrossFitters. Yep. Yep. So that's how I. So you were first specializing started. in the CrossFit, like physical rehab therapy, or and just, rehab, and or just happened to be that that's who your a lot of your clientele was. I was at, I was set up in a CrossFit gym because I knew just being in Similar Baltimore and seeing it. <laughs> I talked to a lot of CrossFit owners, and they all said, you know, we would love to have somebody on site that wants to work with these people that don't necessarily have you know they're not like needing to come three times a week they just instead of putting 90 pounds over their head they want to put 130 pounds over their head 
right? And they need to figure out how to get there. They yeah. have a mobility problem or something. Yeah, and insurance doesn't cover that. They don't. If you can lift 90 pounds over your head, you shouldn't need <laughs> physical therapy, right? So mm-hmm. that's kind of what I'm doing now is more of like a wellness based and to optimize their performance yes. as opposed to like recovering from a major injury. Yeah, and I mean, I did see some people too for rehabilitation. Obviously, right? If you, oh my gosh, I rolled my ankle while we were running in Murph. Okay, let's take care of that, right? So. That's what I do as well. But I really loved when people people started coming into me like, Kelsey, I did something the other day and it, it doesn't hurt, but it didn't feel right. Can you just check it and make sure? Yes, I will absolutely make sure nothing's wrong because I'd rather people come see me first, figure out what their body's weaknesses are. And yeah. then, you know, before then, they get hurt. Exactly. exactly. I love this idea because I've I went through physical therapy when I had some injuries when I was younger. And every single time I came out of physical therapy, I felt like I was a better athlete because muscular imbalances got addressed. And then mm-hmm. I would think to myself, like, well, why can't my coaches figure this out? Or, you know, why mm-hmm. maybe maybe a trainer could. And it, a lot of times it was just a lack of knowledge. So having someone with better knowledge of the body there as a, as a coach or a supplement to whatever your performance is, like, to me, it's brilliant. And I'm glad to see that someone's implementing it. Yeah. Well, what's nice, too, is I'm still looking um, to refer people out to other physical therapy clinics around here, especially if they need, like, post-op work or super Mm -hmm. acute, you know, their insurance will cover it. I do more of the cash base of, okay, let's take you from that rehab to back to CrossFit or back to your full training, right? So sometimes there's a little gap between rehab and getting back to your full sport that sometimes you, it sometimes is missing. So I just want to be that missing link as well. Speaking of your clientele, you know, being CrossFit and whatnot, what do you feel are a lot of the common injuries from CrossFit? And do you think it's because of lack of knowledge or just wear and tear on your body or something like that? Well, shoulders, low back, and knees are the big ones. I think it's also a lack of, as we get older, especially as we go through school, we don't have recess anymore. And I think the lack of playing it really does it to people. It's not just CrossFit. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> lifestyles. We, exactly. We go to work. We sit. We don't really do too much. We don't play on the monkey bars anymore. We don't, you know, run around or anything. It's that's what I noticed when I first started CrossFit again in 2013 when I working on computers all day. Yep. When I hung from the bar for the first time, I was like, Oh, when did I get so heavy? It's been a while since fifth grade when I did this before, right? So that's what I found more is then people try to do some of the fancy stuff, right? Like the kipping pull-ups or the handstand push-ups because they want to look cool and they don't take that time to address, oh, I don't ever do this. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's where you see a lot of injury. So back to your question, shoulder, it's a lot of rotator cuff tendonitis just because they're pulled forward a little bit more. The rotator cuff can't work quite as well. There's that muscular imbalance there, especially with sitting for a long time too. You get that mid-back stiffness, so you can't maybe get your hand up overhead. So when you try to press, this is where you get to, or you arch your back. Low back, when we're sitting, right, our hip flexors get super short, and they tend to work more than our abs. So then our abs don't stabilize our back, and our hip flexors do way too much work. That's another general one. And then straighten myself up here. Yeah, there you go. I know. I I, (laughs) I might readjust. I was like, it sucks because I have to keep leaning over, but I'm like, oh, Oh, you're fine. I'm trying to do this the entire time. Well, and then knees just take the stress of it. So the knees the knees are dumb. All they do is bend and straighten. Unless you get tackled, you probably don't have a knee issue, right? It's mostly lack of mobility at the ankle is a big one. Just because, again, you sit, you're not – or people in high heels, they can't squat to save their life. So That's me. Oh, no, gosh, you got to stop those heels. So <laughs> – yeah, so I think yeah, the more fidgety he's you gotta are, look good when he goes better. out though. Yeah, 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 so you have to weigh you gotta make pros the calves and those calves look pop. good. Yeah, <laughs> my booty, bootylicious. <laughs> so you think? Um, do you think that that's something that is always going to be pretty common with with CrossFit? Like the average CrossFitter is that kind of like that's your clientele with that? Yeah, those are the things to watch out for. What? Should someone who's going to get into CrossFit who's thinking, yeah, I'm going to go right into a kipping pull-up even though I haven't done a pull-up in two years, they might be thinking, okay, maybe I shouldn't do that, but is there something they can focus on to prevent these common injuries? Yeah. I mean, the the gyms that I'm working with now, listen to the coaches because they know. Um, if they say, you know what, you need to back off that weight a little bit, you should probably back off the weight. So it's or, checking the ego a little. Mm-hmm. That's, that's really what it comes down to. A lot of people are really stubborn and they're like, no, no, I'm just going to do this. I'll be fine. What, what else can I do, right? I mean, I can tell you what I recommend and why. And I usually bring it back to because I don't want you to get hurt because at the end of the day, we don't want, we don't want to fill out paperwork. We don't want, you know, we don't want to call 911. We don't 
don't want anybody getting hurt. So as long as they listen, listen to their body too. So, yeah. What do you feel is like is a, a typical workout for the average CrossFitter? <laughs> well, that's a loaded that's, question. <laughs> I know. I know, I think, but uh, I like it. I want to know. Uh, well, I think the most the most common theme that I've seen in a lot of CrossFit gyms is the beginning of class, there's a warm-up, and then they have either a strength or a skill portion. So you take that time out of like doing the crazy workouts that you're trying to go for time or reps. You take the time to develop either strength or a skill, depending on the cycle that they're going through. And then they'll do what they call the Metcons or the workouts themselves. So that's the typical pattern that you see. Some gyms will do the more traditional where it's maybe um, what they call a single modality day. So it's just strength for back squat. And then the next day will be double modality. So maybe it's a running and a gymnastics movement. And then the third day will be three movements all put together in a workout and then a rest day. So, so it um, pays to come more than one once a day yes. or once a yeah. week, I should say. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of people do like that three times a week type of deal. Um, that all depends on the person too. So Well, I guess you're, yourself is one, but do people use it as like a you know, part-time crossfitting. So maybe I go here once a week and then I have more structure the rest of my week, but I do it because... And it helps me get some cardio or, or something like that. Like Yeah, there's a few people like that. I know a lot of people, usually when they pay for a CrossFit membership, it's a little bit more expensive than a typical gym because you do get that, you know, it's coaching. So you do get that coaching aspect to develop your skills a little bit more. So people try to come a little bit more often than that. I'm a special case, I think. Not a lot of people are also training for something else on top of it. Um, I know some yeah. people that'll train for other things will kind of do CrossFit workouts on their own as well, just for, again, that body weight movement or just some sort of different cardio. I don't know if that answered your question, but. <laughs> oh, yeah, it does, because I, I just was curious. Like, one of the things I struggle with is I just don't like cardio. and I, But I like going to the gym, and I like doing bodybuilding-style training. Mm -hmm. Um, so to get the cardio in, I need to find alternatives. Uh, I may have discovered spinning recently. Shout out to another podcast that we did. <laughs> but I used to play sports, and these days it's harder for me to play sports. I've had a few injuries, and I'm an old man, so you just got that. Those You're only as old as you want to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could join one of those weekend warrior uh, yeah. <laughs> leagues or something. Play basketball, with me. but that, that that would help me. But I felt I felt like you know I thought to myself at one point maybe I could do CrossFit like once a week and just keep make sure that I. Uh, I keep my rest periods down and with the people around me I'd have like the camaraderie and keep my heart rate up um, it just depends on the workout too right I mean <laughs> and the, and the so, cost yeah well some of this well some gyms too will do like so many days a week but anyways um but it just depends on the skill because you don't want to always see the same skill or if you don't practice that skill all the time you know then you just have to know how to mm -hmm. modify it or that's the only bad part about doing it once a week <laughs> so all right so you got to yeah. be all in mm -hmm. that's the best <laughs> way to do it <laughs> Uh, most of the people that end up joining, I would guess, are the general population, and mm -hmm. they're just looking to improve their fitness and health. Yep, yep. That's the and fun so, part, yeah. You know, they don't have to be planning to compete or anything like that, right? No, yeah. We do um, – I know at West Virginia, we started getting more of a competitive gym. They were still – like a lot of the newer ones, like within the year, like drank the Kool-Aid and just all of a sudden were like, oh, my gosh, this is awesome, and then just wanted to use competitions just to kind of see themselves grow as athletes, which is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. So it's nice that you don't have to be, again, that professional athlete. You can just watch yourself get better. And that's that's the big thing is just seeing yourself improve over time. Like we have a couple people that uh, started with they could only step up to like a plate maybe. And then they started jumping up on the plate. And that was like, that's a huge improvement. Or even going mm -hmm. from push-ups on the box to starting push-ups on the floor. How cool is that? Right? So right. that's that's really what it's we see a lot more sometimes. here. little things sometimes. Yeah. Little yeah. things. What, tell me about uh, Muscle Up. That was in West Virginia, right? Mm hmm Tell me, how'd you get involved with that? Well, my husband got a job that brought him to West Virginia, and we, we thought it'd be a really good stepping stone job for him. And I panicked, and I said, well, what am I going to do in West Virginia? So I started calling a lot of different outpatient clinics and sending my resume, and nobody responded back to me. <laughs> I was like, uh-oh. That's when I said, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to open up my own office, do what I want to do. I always felt like I was... um pulled down and I couldn't really treat the way I wanted to with juggling patients in an outpatient clinic, like seeing four or five people in an hour, I'm not going to give good treatment. Between that and just the just the limitations from insurance companies, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to do what I want to do. So opened up Muscle Up just because it's what I wanted to do. What was, I mean, you know, give us a little bit more finite. What was it that, that you wanted to do with it? So I really love watching people move. Like my husband hates traveling with me because I will sit at the airport and just watch people move. So that actually gave me the time to sit, watch people move. Being a CrossFit coach, I got to watch people move. So the people I saw in my office, 
I got to help them on the gym floor too. Like, hey, do you remember how I told you this the other day? Do this instead, you know, just because I want you to keep getting better. So with muscle up, I'm able to watch people move, see what their body does, think about, okay, why is it doing it? What is their ultimate goal? You know, is, okay, is their shoulder moving all weird and then they can't press overhead? Okay, so maybe it's something going on in the shoulder or I had some people that's like, oh, their back and their hip hurt. Oh, well, because this shoulder doesn't move right, you know, so (laughs) really just trying to bring it down to not treating the symptoms, but treating the problem. You were treating a lot of different types of of clientele prior. Uh, Mm -hmm. You said you had powerlifting and bodybuilders and and crossfitters, but when you had muscle up, did you feel like that was more for crossfitting patients? Okay. When I was doing outpatient, um, I was treating everybody, all ages, right? anything going on, the people that just wanted to come in for heat and stim, the people that didn't really want to do anything, and then the people that wanted to get better. So I had more of the general population, whereas when I opened up Muscle Up, that's when I had not just the CrossFitters, but people that actually wanted to get better. You know what I mean? That they actually took the time to pursue CrossFit because they wanted to get fit. And now I'm here and they're taking their time because I was private pay. So they're taking their time to say, you know what? I want to move well. So it was seeing more of those people. So not necessarily bodybuilders, uh, power lifters, because it's the person dependent. So regardless of what sport they did, it was they're seeing me because they actually want to get better. I'm not just giving somebody a home exercise program and then saying, well, this was a waste of time because they're not going to look at this ever again. It's people that I said, you know what? This is what you need to do to warm up before you squat. This is what you need to do to warm up before you do anything with your shoulders. Okay. So them coming to you was definitely more attractive for yourself as, as your career. Yes. What were some of the things that people came to you and said, well, you know, this helped me for, for this exercise? Or did you see a lot more of, I guess, people that were kind of just dipping their toes in or were these more serious? Well, I mean, you're going to get the people that just, hey, my friend told me about you. You do the cups, right? And, you know, <laughs> whatever. But then there were the people that said, you know, I, ca- I got to see patterns too. My big thing is nobody wants to do an hour rehab program on their own at home. Nobody. So my big thing was, let's just get you the most bang for your buck. See these three exercises, they will take you five minutes, do them before you work out, and that will help you. You know what I mean? And if you want more of a program, let me help you with that, sure. But it was more of the people that I was like, you know what, we just got to get you to prevent your injuries or get better faster. Let's just do the most bang for your buck exercises. Yeah. So, and then of course I got some people that came in were like, oh my God, this girl's nuts and never came back. So, and that's fine. Cause then I probably didn't want to see them anyways. Right. If they weren't going to listen. So it's fine. Fair enough. <laughs> You're too intense. Yeah. Well, I had oh, I'm looking for not... someone to validate all their like, woe is me. Yeah, well, he's not in here anymore, but um, I yes, that too. I had a big poster. So like when you walked in my door, I had a big poster of, of the animal. Oh, what's his name? McGrath, a big bodybuilder. And it said, shut up and train on it. And it was yeah. just like his giant quads <laughs> just like yeah. roided out. Just like, just that's the first thing. So that yes. was my icebreaker of... Okay. That's how I weeded people out. Yeah, I don't expect to see that when I go into like a medical professional. <laughs> right. <office. laughs> well, and then like I always wear like I don't have the white lab coat, right? And I don't wear like this is probably the nicest that I look in jeans. She's not wearing shoes. So. Yes. And <laughs> half the time I don't treat in shoes. Um, but like I would normally wear gym clothes like leggings, a nice shirt, obviously, like a nicer like T-shirt or something. This is a nice shirt for me. So but that's what I do because I move a lot more. I'm right. in the gym setting. Well, you got to be comfortable. And Makes nobody sense. recognized me. I wore nice clothes one time. No. Nobody said hi to me at my gym. Wow. Cause nobody, and I wore my hair down once. Nobody recognized me. I'm like, feel, okay, that's, well, that's nice. <laughs> sounds like you're upset about this. I am. A little bitter. <laughs> Notice me. <laughs> nobody even said hi. I'm like, what if I was a new person? <laughs> Notice me. It's fine. <laughs> so, so getting back to more of your personal stuff. Now that you've, when you transition from crossfitting to, to uh, powerlifting to bodybuilding, back to mm-hmm. all what you know kind of seems like you're kind of still kind of doing all three how does that affect your diet because you said you know five pounds you can't do Mm pull-ups what are you trying to like what are your goals well yeah that'll change based on what i'm doing right now i actually get to i get to try to gain a couple pounds so i'm excited i get to eat more next week trying to lift as much as you can yeah because i tried one macro breakdown and i just felt awful this week so my goals now is i want to feel good when i lift i want to lift a little bit more my big goal is to try to bench 200 by march the end of march here and uh, yeah (laughs) 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> so, I mean, so I'm trying to play around with eating in that sense. When I CrossFit, whenever I did it before, I just kind of, <laughs> I CrossFitted so I could eat. I was that person. So I'm like, oh, I did a mm-hmm. workout today. I'm going to eat a pizza. I'm you know? reward myself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, um, you earned it. <laughs> So now I've just really tried to get it to, you know what, I'm going to eat really well through most of my week. My cheat today was I went to Brugger's and got a breakfast sandwich and then followed up with Dunkin' Donuts and got some donuts for myself. Oh, it tasted so good. But it was deadlift day and I worked with stones, so I feel like I deserved it. Um, Oh, I use deadlift day as my cheat day too. Yeah, it's the best day to cheat on. So yeah, so I mean, based on what I'm doing, like right now, again, my goal is strength. So I want to eat a little bit more and I have to make sure I eat the right more right and that's not the seafood diet it's you know really <laughs> figure out what i need to eat and then once bodybuilding comes around that's when i'll start cutting and having somebody else tell me what to do again because i still don't really know what i'm doing so, so it's more <laughs> yeah something you're just kind of dipping into as well yeah. do you feel like you have now that you have kind of restrictions and stuff like that with your diet that you're not as maybe not having as much fun with it or do you think that that's just kind of par for the course I actually, I get really, now I'm so mad. I get almost a little anxious now if I don't eat what I'm supposed to because that, I did it what, from like May till October, I ate on a diet and then even after my show, I did reverse dieting. So then all through Christmas and like the holiday season, I didn't care what I ate and I felt Mm -hmm. awful. I just felt Mm -hmm. awful. I had so much water weight. I had so much bloat. I ate so many cookies. They were so good, but they were good, but then you kind of don't get the same satisfaction out of it. And now that I'm actually kind of watching what I eat, I feel good again. You know what I mean? So I'm, yeah. not, I'm not really missing out on anything. Cheat- I got derailed on Christmas as well. I know what that's like. Yeah. <laughs> so the one cheat meal a week is really, it does it for me. So, and I've got my little cheats I'll do through the week. Like, oh, I'm going to have my halo ice cream, you know, or whatever. But this is a question I, I like to ask. Uh, I think Dan personally likes it as well. <laughs> but do you think if you are a vegan or vegetarian, that you'd be able to sustain the lifestyle? Personally, I couldn't. I love cheeseburgers way too much. Like, I couldn't do it. <laughs> so I know of athletes I've worked with that have done gone vegetarian or vegan, and it just takes a lot of research, right? And you just have to know what you're eating and supplements. Yep. But I personally, mm-mm, I like meat way too much. <laughs> so I'm, I'm fascinated by nutrition. It's something that I probably have studied more than I even have the exercise end of things. So yeah, Nick's Nick's poking because he knows the kind of diet that I'm on right now. And so Dan's we may have some podcast episodes in the future that could end up being controversial. But I'm also open minded. And when I hear about like vegan athletes, I'm fascinated by it because that's like hard for me to wrap my head around. Didn't LeBron James do it for a while? Mm. I think didn't he go vegan and then Kyrie Irving did. Okay, I know somebody. I know somebody got super lean on it. You know, so that's that's what I've noticed. Like the vegan couple basketball players started. I don't know about LeBron James, but okay, it was a it was a thing in basketball last year. Um, yeah. David Johnson did it. Then he promptly got Running injured back. and had his worst season Running ever this back, year. Yeah. So that didn't work out so well for him. Yeah. Tony Gonzalez was like a, he was like a lacto-ovo vegetarian. He made it work. What's your favorite cheat meal? It's either burger, fries, milkshake, or a whole pizza. I love <laughs> eating just, I get a like, whole large pizza. You say a whole large? Huh? Yep. Whole yeah. large pizza. I've done me, it before. Me and you both, it's... girl. Me and you both. <laughs> <laughs> What's a Rochester style pizza like? It just, it depends where you go. Yeah. I don't What's know. that? It depends where you go. Okay. Okay. So yeah. There's no, there's no style here. No, not really. So. Yeah. I feel like they just leak off of Buffalo. Anyways, yeah. so. wow, shots <laughs> fired. That's right. I'm not a big fan of Buffalo style pizza. In all honesty, I'm a New York City kind of guy. Oh, you know what I haven't had You're yet for a, a cheat meal? <laughs> I haven't had a garbage plate yet. That oh, wow. I was thinking about that when I came out here. I was like, man, yeah. if there was something I could hit on the way back, what would be the meal? <laughs> that I was would like, be it. You know, I could try to do a little. That's bit the of staple a, food of an abbreviated garbage plate of some kind. People that are not from Western New York are listening right now. Like, what is a garbage plate? And how? Why is that appealing? It's just delicious. <laughs> it's so many it's a heart attack on a plate and it's so good (laughs) mac salad is like the official side dish of rochester new york yeah i've noticed (laughs) that's true (laughs) you left west virginia and you came back here to western new york tell us about that journey my husband and i knew eventually we wanted to be back with family so um he ended up getting a job that was closer to here um and it just kind of worked out that it was coming up to the holidays and that's when i usually don't see a whole lot of people anyways in my business so i'm like you know what this might be the perfect time to close down and then kind of reinvent myself back at home for the new year just so i could you know be back in my hometown still do what i do but really fine-tune it west virginia was a nice trial run for me i really 
figured out what I like to do for myself. And I'm still figuring it out. It's still going to be, you know, everybody changes too as they grow. But moving home was, I mean, it's a move. First of all, moving sucks. (laughs) But uh, yeah, but it was just, it's nice to be home. Poor timing with winter, but (laughs) it's fine. You still got winter down there. Yeah, it's just nice to be here and be able to do what I want to do and just be around family and friends. So yeah, I don't know. (laughs) And now what what do you want to do now? So now that you're here, what is it? What's your goals? Similar to, um, to what I had down there. What I started doing down there was traveling. Um, in West Virginia, like going from like one big area to another. One gym I went and visited once a week was about 96 miles round trip. And then the other one was about 70 miles round trip. But I got to see more clients that way because it was hard for them to get to me. So that's why I made two locations here. Um, one on the east side of the city, one on the west side of the city. Because I want to just kind of do the same thing. Work with people that, yes, in a CrossFit gym, but I'm hoping to reach out to other gyms as well. People that just want to be active and just move better. And again, hoping to get connected with more of the chiropractors, massage therapists, and physical therapists around here just so that we can give well-rounded care because really one person doesn't need just one thing. I don't expect people to just see me. I want you to go see a chiropractor. I want you to go see a massage therapist. You need to figure out what works for you. And I just want to be a piece of people's health care. Yeah, cogs in the wheel. Mm-hmm. And what do you think? Well, you can give a shout out to the, to the two gyms you're at right now if you'd like. Yeah, <laughs> so um, at Performance, well, we're at uh, Perform Athletics here in Penfield, the CrossFit ATX, and then shout Shout out to CrossFit Ambition for being awesome. They've always, I've always come back to these two gyms when we were out of town. If we were staying at my parents, I'd come to Penfield. If we were staying at my in-laws, I'd go to Ambition. Both of them were fantastic communities. And it sounds like I got lucky and I picked the right two. So, And they're yeah. both CrossFit gyms, right? Both CrossFit yeah. gyms. Yep. And they both took me in with open arms, which is <laughs> even better so that yeah. I can actually do what I want to do here. So Awesome. Yeah. Are you going to stick with the muscle up? Are you going to... Yep. I am officially muscle up, but I changed it to wellness and recovery. I found that the... I am, you know, I'm still a physical therapist. I'm still going to advertise physical therapy. But when people saw that, they thought, oh, I have to be injured. I don't Mm -hmm. want people to think that they have to be injured to come see me. So... Yeah, what you're doing is pretty unique. So the marketing and branding around it must be a challenge. Yeah. Which which leads to the next question is, <laughs> uh, is how important has the internet and social media been for you or, or, you know, just kind of the growth of, of your field? So in my time in West Virginia, whenever I posted on Instagram and shared it to my Facebook page, I got more patients. When I didn't do it, I had a low patient count. I'm like, what is happening? So now I've actually made it a goal for myself to do. I'm doing different series now and I actually have my whole year planned out. Like right now I'm doing a back to basic series and it's just easy prehab, rehab, back, core exercises. Next will be shoulder. I'm hoping to do some with education on different pieces of physical therapy or injuries or CrossFit or whatever, powerlifting. So I'm trying to go like three times a week posting on something educational, posting about my own personal stuff like, hey, I'm practicing what I preach. You know what I mean? Because I found that that social media presence really helps. And then I just follow a whole lot of, I work by myself, so I don't get to interact with other PTs. So it's nice to have that Instagram post to say, oh, I like watching the prehab guys and I like to see what they do or that barbell physio, barbell rehab, just to get other ideas of, oh, that is really cool. I could use that with this person. So so people that are not in Rochester or in the state, they could follow you and see mm-hmm. what you're doing. I've actually had a couple people say, hey, do you mind looking at my desk? lift video and Mm -hmm. if you don't mind giving me some critiques on it you can you let me know if i'm safe with this so a random person i don't know from somewhere in the carolinas maybe (laughs) you know that i've never met so i've actually had a few people reach out and say hey love what you're doing can you do this for me or you know can you help me out is it possible to do it online like online physical therapy i I actually do um i'm offering tele pt so either through webcam or consults over the phone i can only do new york or west virginia for formal physical therapy but it's just fun to look as a coach too just to help people move so so people want to follow you how do you prefer they get in touch or yeah. they find out more about you instagram is um at muscle up pt muscle up underscore pt my website www.muscleuppt.com you can get some more information there and then i'm on facebook now as muscle up wellness and recovery we'll make sure we put the links in the show notes all right so last couple questions you kind of you said you're, you're doing powerlifting is that's what's next for you well i guess technically next is a crossfit competition but that's just more for fun so yes the next big thing that my big goals right now is personally, that power for lifting. personally yeah yeah powerlifting meet i've got a few numbers i want to hit and then um show come a figure show come september october good luck thank you what's, yeah. what's the organization putting on the powerlifting competition uspa okay 
We have a we're in, we're uh, talking to a, one of the New York State record holders in uh, women's powerlifting soon. So oh, nice. I wonder if you guys will be in the same competition at all. Well, this one's a drug tested meet, and from what I've seen, nobody has any records in my weight class. So hopefully, if oh. I can hit my numbers, I can just sweep the then board. We can add that to the yeah. to your d- to your bio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And if there was any one thing that you could change about your fitness career, what would it be? Oh man, that's a tough one. I don't know. Going deep here. He I know. Jeez. The emotional um. wounds. No, no. <laughs> we want regrets. No. <laughs> no, that no, doesn't have to be a regret. It could be anything, really. I don't know. I mean, I just. Do you feel like maybe like so like for me personally, I've always been similar to you where I've never totally focused in one thing, and so I think I've, I've ever had not necessarily a regret, but uh, if I had had the ability to focus in one thing early on when I was younger, I would have maybe chose football or something like that. Mm-hmm. So similar to that, I don't think it's a regret necessarily. It's just something that you know maybe given the opportunity, that's something I, I would have felt more inclined to do. I think I just I wish I just would have played with all of this more sooner, especially the strength sports. I've had a blast being able to change from powerlifting to bodybuilding, going back into CrossFit. Like I said, I'm just so happy my body can do definitely this fortunate. Stuff. Yeah, I was gonna say you're yeah. definitely fortunate you're able to do something like that. So I just want to enjoy it for as long as possible. So I wish I kind of found it a little bit earlier, but I'm happy that I found it when I did. I think especially ladies in the late 20s, early 30s, really early 30s is when we kind of peak as far as strength goes, especially just because of good old hormones and such. So <laughs> I mean, so I feel like I'm just learning everything now so I can hit my peak hopefully in the next couple of years. There you go. Yeah. And the fact that you can do you can do all this and have been healthy the last few years, I think, is a testament to, to your knowledge. It would have been probably nice to have that guidance. Yes, when you were I wish. So, so the other big thing I did was, like I said, chiropractic massage, and then the float therapy, and then starting to do some psychology stuff with myself too. I wish I did that all through college. Oh my gosh, I wish I actually took care of myself a little bit more than just the rehab portion of it and the ice, all the ice baths. I wish I had done a little bit more of that. So to all the young people, listening. yes, to all the young people, <laughs> yes, take care of your body. <laughs> Don't take it for granted. <laughs> I think it's too. It's just something that you're when you're immersed to it, or at least when you're finally introduced to it. That's when you, that's when the light bulb maybe kind of mm-hmm. you know kicks on. And you're like, oh, that's what I should be doing. Yep. <laughs> You know, pretty much. But other than that, you know, we're young. We think we're super. It's life. We, we think we're superheroes and nothing can stop us. We we dodge bullets and we, you know, can jump tall buildings. And then at, I don't know, 25, you're like, no, nah, that's, that's not oh, how it works. Wait. <laughs> it's a slow decline. <laughs> yeah. It's a steep decline. <laughs> But speaking of our listeners for the Hero Fit Podcast, any pro tips that you want to impart? Just take care of your body. That's the biggest thing. Find your healthcare team. Take care of your body. All right. This is a new side of Nick because he always tells me that age is just a number whenever I start, <laughs> start getting Oh, and suddenly we're steep I'm declining older. at 25. That's because I'm older. That's I'm 35. It's definitely a steep decline. But no. Whenever I make self-deprecating jokes. 35 is the new He's 25. On top of it. <laughs> I just feel like this is me. I should be jumping in and lifting you up now. Yeah, yeah where are you, Dan? <laughs> I'm falling off. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, you're just you're just starting to rise, Nick. All right. So thanks. <laughs> well, thanks, Kelsey. Appreciate you being on the podcast. You've Thank been a pleasure. Fountain of information. Thanks, guys. Yes. And um, if anyone's in the area and needs, you know, your expertise, especially um, CrossFitters out there in, in the Western New York area. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Not pay that a visit. you just specialize in that, but <laughs> I think I might buy a session. Yeah. There you go. So thanks for listening to the Hero Fit Podcast with Nick and Dan. We hope you enjoyed our show. If you want to know more about this episode or listen to past podcasts, check out HeroFitPodcast.com. Our audience is strong, so we can't ask you to smash the subscribe button. Instead, please gently tap, jab (laughs) the subscribe button. (laughs) Also, leave us a review, please, on iTunes, Spotify, Google, or whatever medium you're listening to us on. And if you know someone that would benefit from the podcast, share it with a friend. Thanks again, Kelsey. Thank you. This has been another episode of the Hero Fit Podcast, making humans great again, one podcast at a time.